Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm previewing Caulfield for the weekend. Track rated a good four. I think that this meeting is packed for the winners and horses that re represent value. Well, they will if they get up. Let's get into the video. Before I start my preview, go check out the seminar. He inspired me to do something that I've always wanted to do in creating horse racing content and finding winners. And if I find some at double figures, that's even more enjoyable. He's a great tipster and is definitely worth going to have a look at. And he finds a lot of winners. Well, he can after I do. Let's get into the preview. Before I start, be sure to vote for Flying Mascot in the All Star Mile. Every vote counts. Flying Mascot number one. Let's go! Race one is a three year old Phillies benchmark 70 handicap over the 1400 meters. This is the market headed by Manouche at $3 with Let's Say Grace at 4 and Burning Power and Throntari at 5. This was a couple of starts ago of Al Patronage, which was a fair while ago during the spring at Farmington, where the filly jumped away really well, but was wide shortly after the jump, so the jockey being Brett Preble elected to stride forward and set, it, and set one out one back from the New Zealand visitor in Tatanka. Fired that horse for most of the race, peeled off his heels late uh, before entering the straight. That's when the jockey started riding and El Patroness kept kicking, though she did get the wobbles late and was, but she won, she was good and won well. I've got her on top, I think she's going to go straight to the front from the middle gate and run them ragged. Throntar in for second was great last start at the valley and is on the backup. Interested to see how she goes. Manoush and Mingora next best, but I think the filly El Patroness will go to the front and be hard to catch. $10 the win. Race 2 is a benchmark 70 handicap over the 1800 metres. I think the race is already run 1. This is the market headed by Worthley at 260 and Irish Butterfly at 650 and Hasseltoff third pick at $7. This is the last start effort of Worthily at Flemington where he jumped fairly and settled second to last. Jockey started riding before the turn. Looked like he had nowhere to go halfway up the straight. Got off the heels of top choice late and sprinted well. Hit the line like a bullet train but was no match for the flying Nicolito, Nicolini Vito. Considering it was his first start in Australia, it was a great effort. I've got him on top. I think with a much better barrier, he should jump better and be hard to hold out over the concluding stages and hopefully hit the line how he did at Flemington and win. Science Hill Lover, I think, is over the odds. Definite place chance. Hasseltoff, he's had enough chances for mine. And my first of eight value runners is Perineal. He's not terrible first up, likes good ground, and I think is over the odds for a place. But Worthy should be too, too strong late. $30 the win. Race 3 is a benchmark 78 handicap. Over the 2400 meters, this is the market headed by Lost Impact at $4 and Swarthmore Magic at $5.50 and Salto Angel, third pick of the market at $7.50. This is the last start effort of Brilliant Venture at Caulfield over the 2380 meters where he jumped well and he had the rails, settled two back on the fence and eventually got the box seat third. Jockey Niggle before the turn was third around the turn and got the split late. He sprinted away over the final 100 metres with the closest horse to him being Salto Angel, who was 2.75 2 lengths away. He's my second value runner of the day because I think he'll jump well again. He doesn't have to lead as long as he's in a prominent position. An extra 20 metres won't be any issue off that last start performance. Lump's impact for second was good last start at the Valley and gets 3.5 kilos off a last start. And Laura Lafferty takes three, 3 more kilos off. Is a great chance. Always throw Salto Angel in. He's just a non-winner, uh, but he's a great chance. And the master, Damien Oliver, takes over. And look closely next best, but I think Brilliant Venture or Lost Impact will win. $10 on them both to do so. Leaning towards Brilliant Venture because of his last start at Caulfield and his overall record of his Caulfield runs. Race 4 is the Group 3 Chairman Stakes over this 1,000 metres. This is the marker headed by Renusu at 290 and Sabanak at 460 and then Equivocal at 750. This is the last start effort of Renusu at Flemington on Melbourne Cup Day. Jumped well down the straight and was third in the group that was on the grandstand side. Craig Williams started niggling passing the 428 metres and started riding along at the 318 metre mark where there was an immediate response and went straight past the stable mate in Lascars. Put his head in front over the final 50 metres, but the inside horse in Brereton gave a little kick, enough for Renusu to be beaten, 0.1 of a length. 
I think against this field, he could be a couple of lengths off his best and still win. I think that Rounder Ben for the first time is a concern, but he's a progressive horse and should be winning. Miss Patmill for second was scratched from Kensington on Wednesday in a March easier race. I was pretty keen on her there, but in the nation brings us south. Equivocal in for third. Her only start was in a listed race at the Valley. Sabanak next best, but I'm pretty keen on here on Renusha to win the Group 3, as I'm sure a lot of people will be, and I wouldn't be surprised at all if she start if it if she if he starts on odds on ten dollars the win on him and five the place on Miss Patmore. Race five is the Group Three man from stakes over the twelve hundred meters. This is the market with Palali the two eighty favorite, closely followed by th Generation at three fifty, and the unbeaten unflinching at four fifty. This is the last start effort of Paolelli at Flemington in the Group 1 Cornwall stud stakes where he jumped fairly from the middle to inside gate, snagged back and had to go near the last when the rest of the field came across from the outside. Had horses all around him passing the 500 metres. Damien Oliver was riding hard passing the 350 metres. Had no luck over the concluding stations and was slightly disappointing but ran on well but the leader was off and gone. He's on top. He's coming back a fair way in grade from G from Group 1 to Group 3. He's had one try to get ready for this, where he finished fourth to a couple of smart spritters in Malkovich and Minhaj. I think he'll just win, but wherever he goes here or Sydney, he should bolt in. So he's my best of the day. If he's scratched, I'm with unflinching. Damien Thornton retains the ride and always beware the unbeaten horse. I learnt that last week with Marabi. Generation has done little wrong. Same for Lena's legend. And another value runner comes up here in Umgawa. I was pretty keen on her. Pretty keen on him at Sandown on Wednesday, and at eleven dollars the place uh, is definitely overs. Thirty dollars the win on Paolo to Bolton, and ten dollars on Unflinching if Paolo Lee goes to Sydney. Race six is a Phillies and Mares benchmark seventy eight handicap over the fourteen hundred meters. This is the marker headed by Divine Deosa and Groovy Kind of Love, equal favourites at five dollars, and Vesper Team third pick at six dollars. This is the last start effort of Under My Spell at Flemington where she jumped well but was snagged back and settled at the rear of the field and improved her position at the 1300 meter mark but second, but from second last was three wide rounding the turn but had clear running. Jockey Mick D started riding at the 260 meter mark where she gave a kick and kept going to the line but the winner was good. And the, tri the trifecta spaced, spaced fourth by four lengths, which is good. She's on top for me. Mick D retaining the ride. And when Amaze informed they go well, which she is. Vespertine for second. She was she was flying in the finish at her last start at Caulfield. Groovy kind of love a good chance. Wishful thinking is over the odds. Galgani for my fifth selection. Uh, the concern is that how much did the last start on a firm track take out of her? I'm with under my spell. Ten dollars the win to fly late, and Vespertine to, to do the same thing, but to place. Race seven is a benchmark hundred handicap over the eighteen hundred meters. This is the marker headed by Desert Icon, the three thirty favorite, with Dark Dream at five fifty and Ho, 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 Ho Khan third pick. The two former Hong Kong runners prominent in the market. This is the last start replay of Holbein at Caulfield in another benchmark 100 where Ho Ho can't beat him that day. He jumped well, settled in the box seat and sat there for most of the race. The jockey was niggling from the 1000 meter mark and started riding around the corner where Holbein gave a good kick but the winner came flying down the outside. But I think Holbein can turn the tables is, and is another value runner and score another win. Mind you, he doesn't win that a turn, but coming back in distance to the 1800 metres, his last run at that distance was in the listed Lord Stakes, where they couldn't catch him. Dark Dream for second was a good winner last start at Flemington. Criminal Code, always respect Chris Wother when he brings horses south. Odeon for fourth, five each way uh, on Holbein, and $3 the place on um, Odeon. Race 8 is the benchmark 78 handicap over the 1,100 metres with the marker headed by the Garden at 4.40, Capriccio at $5 and Evening Glory at $6. This is the last start effort of Zorro's Dream when he was last first up and he settled rearward and was pulling slightly. Jockey started riding shortly after entering the straight and once he balanced up came flying down the outside and then went on to perform in town being competitive against Modea. Wilmot Pass, he's a bolter which is really good form. 
I'm with him. He's three starts first up for three placings. Loves good ground, loves the distance, and isn't hopeless at Caulfield and does represent value. The Garden showed a lot in his first campaign, so interested to see how he goes. Rose Courts was a good winner last start at Flemington. Capriccio for fourth. It was him or Evening Glory. I went with him because he show, show, should be ready to show something and gets the master in Damien Oliver and is another value runner. Jumbo Osaki, stable change, dry ground, good first up. I think Zoro's Dream will sit in a handy position and be too strong late. Four each way and five of the place on Rose Corks. We should get a collect. Race 9 is a benchmark 7 a handicap over the 1600 meters. This is the market headed by Tuvalu at $1.95. And $6 is next best for Nicolini Video and Savannah Cloud. This is the last start effort of Tuvalu at Warnable, where he jumped well, went straight to the front and just and was just coasting along in the lead with no pressure whatsoever, was clicked up around the turn, put a big gap on his rival's late, eased up on the line and trotted in. With form holding up in Zoltan being a good winner at the Valley at its next start. I think he'll go straight to the front and be a rinse and repeat effort from his last start and should trot in. Nicolini Vito for second was a brilliant winner last start and like the horse, Josh, Josh Richards is going well. As for runners for value, I thought that uh, Pale King is 3 from 4 first up and 2 from 2 at 1600 metres and 4 from 2 on good ground. Definitely overs. Heavenly Emperor should be ready to show something third up, but I'm with two value in the last. Second is and is my second best at Caulfield. Thank you for watching my preview for Caulfield. I hope that I've found a winner for you and I hope that you've enjoyed it. Let's get some winners.